You have? Donald Trump. Donald Trump is in the WWE Hall of Fame. Let that sink in. Now, he's not, he wasn't a professional wrestler. But again, when we're talking about the power of media and how it makes you feel instead of how it makes you think, just recognize that not only is the current president of the United States in the WWE Hall of Fame, his member of his cabinet, Linda McMahon, the former CEO of WWE, and a member of President Trump's cabinet who heads up the Small Business Administration, she's right there with him. It's not that far-fetched. Just think about that. Now, my goal here wasn't really to educate you about professional wrestling, although I'll talk your ear off later on over a cocktail if you'd like to after the show. But my goal here is that hopefully, the next time you're watching the news and you find yourself getting angry about what you see, that you realize that that's exactly the way they want you to feel. They don't want you to think. They want you to feel, just like Vern Gagne did, just like Vince McMahon did, just like I did for 30 years. And like I did when I first came out here and challenged this gentleman to jump on stage and knock me out. In the 80s, at least they tried to pretend that they were objective. They tried to pretend at least, and most of them did a great job, they tried to pretend at least that there was a, a, an integrity within journalism and lines they wouldn't cross, things they wouldn't do. They would report both sides of the stories and let the audience or the reader decide how they felt about a given issue or personality or politician. But that's gone. And why is that? Why did that happen? It seems to me, at least, that it's, it's, it's really just begun happening over the last 10 years, eight years, is when it's gotten really bad. Where, where what you're watching on television isn't so much informing you and making you think, it's making you feel and pissing you off, more often than not, because that's what they want to do. It's called cheap heat in a wrestling business. It's easy, just like me coming out here and making fun of people, or inviting this gentleman to come up here and try to drag me off the stage if he was man enough, that type of thing, that's called cheap heat. It's easy to get people to react to that kind of thing. A lot easier to get them to react to that than asking them to think. So that's what they do. When cable television came around, I worked for Ted Turner, by the way, for about seven years. One of the best times of my life. Ted Turner launched CNN. At that time, first cable news out, 24 hours, international news, that was Ted's vision. Ted believed he could bring the world closer together as a result of that. But here's what happened. Fox TV followed him. MSNBC followed the business model. And what they realize is it's a hell of a lot cheaper to put three or four talking heads in the studio talking about the news and giving opinions about the news than it is going out and actually reporting it. So now what we see across the boards, and this is a bipartisan problem. This is a media issue. This isn't a one party or the other issue because they're all guilty of it. So now what you see when you're looking for information are talking heads arguing. No matter what it is, they're going to find a way to argue about it. And if they don't have something to argue about, they're going to reach in a little bag of tricks. They're going to pull out a poll because there's more polls now than there are anything else. There's a, poll, there's a new poll every day. And it will tell you whatever you want it to tell you. It falls into the liars, you know, numbers can lie and liars use numbers. That's a poll because those polls provide talking points for the agenda of any, any particular network. Give somebody something to argue about. It's kind of crazy when you think about it. Got? Seriously, I'm a little disappointed. <laughs> no, it's not funny. I flew all the way here from Los Angeles. 
It took me an entire freaking day to get here. And I get this Pavlovian dog response because you feel like you're supposed to be polite. Well, that's even worse. No, you guys, this is not funny. I am one of the most important people you're gonna see on this stage today. And by far the best looking. That's not funny either. What are you smiling about? Look at you. No, you wanna come up here and take me off the stage? By all means, jump, I'll wait. Neighborville. I heard Arthur talking about what a great town this is. This town sucks. <laughs> the only people that think Naperville is a great town are people that have never been anywhere else. Then it's sure, it's a great town. No problem. I think the town sucks. In this building, Arthur called me and he said, Eric, we've got this great venue. You're gonna love the look of it. Are you kidding me? Salvation Army not available, maybe? I've played in bigger buildings and nicer buildings than this in Biloxi, Mississippi. Naperville. I see what you're... You can wipe that look off your face, lady. Because I know what you're thinking. I'm busy tonight. Forget about it. <laughs> All right. I'm glad this part is over. I really, really am. <laughs> now, I got to be honest. I've been doing this for a long time. I told Arthur earlier when I told him what I wanted to do, I wanted to give him a heads up so he didn't send security out here and drag me off the stage. Not that that hasn't happened before either, but I didn't really, I wanted to give him a heads up. And I told him what I was gonna do. Now anybody in this room that's over 45 or 50 years old may remember Vern Gagne. Vern was a professional wrestling promoter based out of Minneapolis. He hired me for what reason? I have no idea, but he did. And Vern used to promote a lot here in Chicago. He had wrestlers like Dick the Bruiser, and Nick Bockwinkle, and Ray Stevens, and The Crusher, and he was a big fixture here. They had wrestling matches at Wrigley Field, for crying out loud. And wrestling has been around for a long, long time. In fact, when it comes to content, and the content that we've all become familiar with throughout our lives, professional wrestling and news are the two most endearing for enduring forms of content that I remember. Because for a long time, Vern didn't want me anywhere near the kind of the, the back door of professional wrestling, the backstage area. That was off limits. It was a secret. It was kind of like magicians. They like to keep their secrets. So he didn't share a lot of things with me. But one of the things he, he did share with me as I started producing for him was that when it comes to the audience, it doesn't really matter if they love a wrestler or hate them, as long as they feel passionately one way or the other. Business would be good. I want you to remember that. As long as the audience feels passionately one way or the other, business would be good. Now, one of the things I talked about in the book is professional wrestling. In fact, right here in Chicago is one of the first weekly network television shows back in the 1950s, in the beginning of the television age. And it went from there to being the number one local television show long before cable came around. In any city in the United States, professional wrestling was the number one most watched form of content in any given market. Cable television came along sometime in the 70s. 80s, whenever it was. Professional wrestling became, and still is to this day, the most watched form of entertainment every single week on cable television. The digital age, the day, and I remind myself before I turn on the television to not let them make me angry, because the minute you get angry, you quit thinking. The minute all of your energy is focused on what you feel, you stop thinking. And by the way, if I'm right, and you all do vote for a former professional wrestler 
to become the next president of the United States, it might just be history repeating itself and it might not be all that bad. Because believe it or not, Abraham Lincoln, one of this country's greatest presidents, was at one time, before he came, became a lawyer, a professional wrestler. It can happen. Thank you all very much. <laughs>